The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus, who said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. A man approached a Little League baseball team, and when he asked the boy in the dugout what the score was, the boy said, well, it's 18 to nothing, we're losing. Boy, the spectator said, I'll bet that you're discouraged. And the little boy said, well, why would I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. Hope is a wonderful thing. And today we wear red, for this is the Feast of Pentecost. It is the arrival of the Holy Spirit and the beginning of the church. This is a feast about hope. We hear this message of hope proclaimed in our good news today. Jesus appears to the disciples behind a locked door, and he says, peace be with you. He knew that they were afraid, but yet that is the words that he used to greet them. And he shows his hands and his side, the scars of his death, and no one questions who he is, but rather they rejoice because they know it is the, written, the risen Lord. And a second time, he says, peace be with you. And then he does something strange. He breathes on them. But why? To answer this question, we must go to two stories of the Old Testament. And the first is the creation story of Adam and Eve, where God, the creator, after forming humankind in his own image, out of dust, God breathed into their nostrils and gave them life. There's also another famous scripture story. That is where in Ezekiel, while the Jews are in exile and ravaged by their enemies, God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel answers, oh Lord, you know. And God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and you will know that I am the Lord. As Jesus breathed on the disciples, once again they were given life by the Lord. Not any life. A life continuing the work of God and sharing in life with Jesus in a very intimate way. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you receive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. What he does is he offers them the ability to share in the divine responsibility of forgiving, of offering hope, of offering new life. Today, on this Feast of Pentecost, Jesus says to you and to me, 
Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. We too have been given that divine responsibility of forgiving, of giving new life, and giving hope. The school system in a large city had a program to help children keep up with their schoolwork while they were in the hospital. One day, a teacher who was assigned to the program received a routine call from a, a, from a teacher whose, whose one child was in the hospital. She took the child's name and the room number and talked briefly with the child's regular class teacher who told her that we're studying nouns and adverbs in his class now and I don't want him to fall behind. And I would be grateful if you would help him. Well, the hospital program teacher went to see the boy that afternoon. No one had mentioned to her that the boy had been badly burnt and was in great pain. Upset at the sight of the boy, she stammered as she told him, I've been sent by your school to help you with nouns and adverbs. When she left, she felt that she hadn't accomplished anything. But the next day, a nurse asked her, what did you do to that boy? The teacher felt that she must have done something incorrect and she started to apologize, but the nurse corrected her and said, no, no, you don't know what I mean. We've been worried about that little boy, but ever since yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back responding to treatment. It's as though he wants to live. Two weeks later, the boy exclaimed that he had completely given up hope until the teacher arrived. Everything changed when he came to a simple realization and he expressed it in this way. They wouldn't send a teacher to work on noun and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? What this does this mean for us today as we celebrate Pentecost as Christians and as church? As Christians, we are reminded that we are not alone, that the Holy Spirit is with us and will be our advocate and will guide us, nurture us, and lead us. As church, we are the same church today that received the advocate, the Holy Spirit, through the disciples. We as church are called to proclaim the good news, the message of hope to a world that cries out for hope, to prophesy to those who have not heard the life-giving word of God, who have not heard or been introduced to the gospel, to dream and bring change and hope to our world, to carry forward the message that no one is alone, that God is with them, and most importantly, to forgive, to share in the divine of that wonderful and sometimes difficult life-giving action. Our challenge as Christians and as church is to go preach the good news to a world that needs hope as much as it has in any time of history. Let us now continue our time of prayer with Joseph and the prayers of the people in our chapel. Let us pray. We begin our prayers this day by giving thanks for the people of St. John's, for our members, friends, and supporters. We give thanks for their prayers and for their financial support in these challenging and uncertain times. We give thanks for the many ways that they have been reaching out to each other with phone calls and for all of the practical ways that they have been the hands and fight 
feet of Christ to their neighbors. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers in particular, for Peter Dent, Kenneth Johnson, Jimmy Curler, John Churchill, Ken and Brian Shoesmith, Patricia Vickery, Valerie Cameron, Peggy Morris, Mary Aslan, and the McTaggart family. We give thanks today for the safe birth of Isabella Maria Rose, granddaughter of Dan and Oriel Prouse of our parish and daughter to Emily and Chris. We pray also for those who have died, remembering especially Keith, Ollie McTaggart, Ross, Grant, and Edward Hall. We pray for all in our hearts and minds at this time that God's healing would be made known in body, mind, and spirit. We pray today for businesses in our communities that have been so adversely impacted by this pandemic. We pray for businesses that are now slowly and carefully reopening, that they find ways to safely serve their customers and keep both themselves and their staff safe. We pray today for those impacted by the news that the Canterbury Hills Camp our neighbors and mission partners will not be operating this summer. We pray for all of the day and overnight campers. We pray for all of their families and for the staff and board members. We now offer and pray our special litany, inviting the presence and power of the Holy Spirit on this great feast of Pentecost. Come Holy Spirit Creator and renew the face of the earth. Come Holy Spirit Counselor and touch our lips that we might proclaim your word. Come Holy Spirit Power from on high, make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth, strengthen us in the risk of faith. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and our Pentecost season blessing. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you once again for being with us in this way. It's our hope to be able to share something similar each week. So. Do please send us prayer requests and we will be honored to share with them during our candle lighting. Go forth now into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.